this is my Heathkit IM103 line voltage monitor uh, from roughly the early 1970s, I believe 1972 or 1973. Uh, this is actually my unit, which I've over the years uh, completely restored and with modern parts, and you'll see that later in the video. Uh, these things, uh, although 50 years old, are still quite useful. Um, this one particularly is useful because obviously it's an expanded range voltmeter. It starts at 90 volts and, and ends at 140 volts and with one volt AC resolution. Um, and it's been quite reliable. Um, I've had it on my desk 24-7 um, and it's, uh, it's worked perfectly. I don't know if you can see it here, but the, you, don't, you might see the needle move a lot. Also, the line voltage is, is low here um, right now. We're about 116 volts. Uh, normally is, of course, 120. Uh, and that varies throughout the day and based on other loads going on in my house and also within the neighborhood. Um, but I do, have, I do have this line on a um, stepped uh, voltage regulator so that if the voltage ever goes below, significantly below about 115 volts, uh, the regulator will auto tap to a larger or slightly higher voltage and bring it back to about 120. But normally the incoming voltage on my, uh, on my service ranges from eh, about 115, 116 to maybe 122. And it, again, it varies during the day and, and what's going on in the neighborhood and whether my utilities decided to uh, switch in uh, one of their voltage regulators to account for um, how all the neighborhoods are doing. Anyway, uh, in this video, we're going to look inside um, three different ones of these. This is my original, which has been restored. I since acquired two others, um, and it's worth showing what uh, what state they came in. I think you'll be uh, amused. And by the way, of course, if you want a more you know a more contemporary voltage line voltage monitor, uh, well, here's the modern day uh, Chinesium equivalent, um, and um, it actually is a uh, these things are worth maybe five bucks a piece, and uh, and oddly uh, they're quite accurate. They're, they are you can calibrate them by opening the thing up. There's a tiny little potentiometer, but right out of the uh, China factory these came from, um, they're actually pretty spot on. So, yeah. Nevertheless, there's nothing like a good old analog uh, meter. So, without further ado, we're gonna look at all three of my line voltage monitors. So here's my original IM103 line voltage monitor um, from 1970 when, or thereabouts when I built the thing originally uh, and I recently re-restored it um, completely as you'll see very shortly. Um, this is the front of it of course, I've already removed the back case uh, the back case, because I can take care of it, has always been in good shape. Uh, but I put new feet on it some time ago because the other ones got hard. This is interesting. This little piece of so-called fish paper um, is a, is sticky on this side, is sticky on this side, and just uh, held down. And the idea is to protect uh, the from putting jamming stuff like screws into the uh, wall mounting screw hole if you're going to do that. So it's just to insulate any kind of screw you put in. Uh, from possibly touching the electronics inside. Anyway, let's um, let's look in let's look in this now that I've taken the uh, the top off. Safety first. Let's unplug it and flip it over. And uh, here's what we see. Um, so every part here has been has been replaced. Um, Starting with the line, the line cord. Uh, it's now a three-wire line cord, which is uh, ground to the case right here, because of course the, the case is there's uh, there's line voltage running around all over this, uh, relatively close to the case, and the case is obviously metal, so it really should be grounded for safety, and now it is. Uh, so three-wire line cord. Um, black is the hot, white is the neutral. Uh, all of these parts are new, starting in, for the parts with the uh, the new electrolytic filter cap. Uh, this one's 100 at 350, uh, and it's held by a, a, st a 3M sticky pad and a wire tie holding it down. Um, some of the this is the 10K resistor, which originally in the Heathkit was uh, Heathkit supplied a 2 watt resistor, which traditionally ran very, 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 very hot. 
uh, and you'll see some of the effects of that in, in the later um, IM 103s that I'm going to show you. In fact, I'm showing you these in, in increasing order of horror. So this one I've, I've nicely restored because I use it every day. So again, brand new 5 watt resistor. Runs warm, of course, but doesn't run hot and is well within now, well within its rating. Uh, new fuse. Uh, my original unit did not come with a fuse. There was no fuse label, which would have normally I would have, would be put here. So I added a, I added a fuse and, and put it in some um, plastic sleeving to insulate it from, well, from the meter context there and anything else. From there it goes to what's now a 1N 4007 rectifier diode and a uh, 100 ohm and 5 watt dropping resistor, which uh, you know, all of this is part of the schematic. So that's the front end. All of these are um, precision resistors, which uh, work as voltage dividers and such to run the meter. There is a, um, a protection diode to, for the meter here. There's also a, a 16.1 uh, volt Zener diode. If I recall at the time, I, I had uh, all of these parts I got from, from DigiKey. No, they're not a sponsor. And the only reason I went to DigiQ was because um, they were the only ones who, who Mauser didn't have a 16.1 volt Zener, which was what's called for. So apart from that, um, it's basically uh, nicely cleaned up. The terminal strip needed heavy cleaning, um, and it, it works perfectly. And it continues to work um, uh, as a desktop accessory, showing the line voltage, which does vary during the day. Uh, Usually around here where I live, I get anywhere from 115 volts to very slightly over 120, depending on, on what's going on, on on my street and whether the utility has seen fit to pop on a, a voltage regulator or disconnect it or whatever. Anyway, so now we're going to go on and show you uh, two more IM103s in, in various states, and you'll appreciate, um, you'll, you'll hopefully appreciate this one. Here's another uh, IM103 line voltage monitor. This is how it would look uh, after you had finished building it uh, back in 1970 using the, all of the original Heathkit componentry that was supplied at the time. Uh, first of all, notice the two wire line cord. There's no grounding at all here, but there's live AC all over the place on a metal chassis, so that's going to be one thing that'll, that will correct, as you saw. A um, couple of other things. This is obviously the electrolytic is uh vintage uh i did test this this one and it, it doesn't it's not too bad it's it's not shorted it's not open it doesn't leak a lot and it has good esr so great um but of course it's gonna it's gonna get replaced the two main areas are, are the fact that these two these two two watt resistors especially this one here uh is underrated uh it runs extremely hot uh and i guess on all the heath kits it always ran very very hot um and then this uh, here's another one that runs warmer, not as hot. These are, of course, going to get replaced. And then the, the diodes here, here, and, and here. Uh, you know, notice one thing that isn't on this one is a fuse of any kind. There is a spot here which was used for a fuse um, in the previous unit you saw, but this particular unit never had a fuse. And in fact, the, as I mentioned, the manual uh, that I downloaded for these, because I lost my original manual, um, doesn't specify a fuse at all, either in the parts list, instructions, nowhere, and there's no label or anything. So it was interesting that Heathkit had some supplied with fuses and some not, perhaps uh, part of a later revision. Apart from that, so this is exactly how um, a competent kit builder would have finished his IM-103 back in 1970 using the parts that were supplied by Heathkit. So here's the third IM103 line voltage monitor uh, by Heathkit. I left the cover on this one, although you'll see, I'd, obviously I did unscrew all the four mismatched wood screws that someone had used to, cert to fasten this, um, just to make it sort of a, a reveal, because what's inside is, is truly kind of shocking, <laughs> literally. Um, so without further ado, let me um, remove this cover. And I'll be, and this will give me the occasion to quote one of the YouTubers I follow. His name is Diode Gone Wild, and uh, what he would have said here to, when he sees this is, "Bloody hell!" Um, the inside of the case looks like uh, a small incendiary device was uh, 
t- blown up inside it. Everything is completely charred. Um, of course, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be complete if the if the case wasn't itself in uh, in crappy condition uh, with a foot missing. And interestingly enough, the um, the blue and white label um, is now a silver and white label. And I'm not sure if that's because the heat burnt off all the blue ink or something, but as far as I know, Heathkit never supplied white, uh, silver and white labels for serial numbers. Anyway, let's look inside and yeah, everything here is bizarre. Uh, interestingly enough, this one did come with a fuse and um, because I know that because here is the original fuse label that, on, at least on mine, I originally wrote in the fuse value. This one is charred. Um, so they wouldn't they wouldn't have added the fuse afterwards because this wouldn't have been here. So Heathkit did supply this uh, original one with a fuse, and it's very likely it was this fuse, which is a full size fuse with end caps and pigtails. Now that's that would be period. This would be period appropriate for the, for the early nineteen seventies. What's inappropriate, of course, is most of the rest of these parts. Um, this is this resistor is I don't know what value this is, but I'll. I'll measure it out when I when I take this apart. Uh, this diode here, this is probably the original diode because it looks like just the others. Uh, this diode here is flapping around. I'm not sure if it's even connected properly. Uh, here's a resistor that's totally charred. Uh, and then and then there's these. Um, remember that 2 watt resistor that chronically overheats in the original Heath kits? Well, someone had tried to, this is how I found it here, and this is, someone had tried to double up some resistors to make a more powerful resistor, a so power-capable resistor. Unfortunately, they didn't do a very good soldering job because this was loose um, and flapping around. And this that's kind of how I found it. Um, yeah, uh, this is even totally unmarked. I have to measure it out. I assume it's a resistor, by the way. Um, uh, this is some other power resistor. This is probably not one Heathkit would have supplied. It doesn't, I've never seen Heathkit supply a power resistor that looks anything like this. Uh, and of course, um, that's um, basically it. The two-wire line cord and, and some rather sloppy sloppy wiring job. Um, never mind the capacitor. Actually, I haven't even tested this capacitor, but uh, given the heat that's obviously gone on here, um, I wouldn't wouldn't uh, bet my life on this capacitor. I did plug this unit in and it did work, although it would not calibrate. And likely the reason it wouldn't calibrate was this resistor was, was loose. Um, but it did work. The needle did deflect and show something approaching uh, line voltage. Um, you might ask, uh, okay, so are you going to totally clean this up and restore it much like you did your original uh, I am 103 with the first one I showed you, and the answer is uh, no. And in fact, I'm not unhappy that it, this one came in such sorry state because this is the one that I'm going to uh, will be the object of my rekit exercise. So, what is a rekit? Well, a rekit, as opposed to a restore uh, or a rebuild, is basically tearing this out and, and completely down to its component parts throwing away all the either inappropriate or, or, or obviously worn parts. In fact, all of the uh, parts in this case that aren't specific to this unit. So all the resistors, um, diodes, and obviously the cap uh, go. And the idea of a rekit is to bring this back to the state in which in 1970 had you, when you were opening your, bo- your Heathkit box, which you had received from Heathkit, what you would have found, you would have found new components in uh, little little uh, brown envelopes, and ready to build. And so I rekit, and that's what I'm going to turn this into, back into kit form as um, as it would have been presented, except with modern components, because I obviously I'm not going to reuse, expect anybody to reuse these. And then I'll see what I do with my new. <laughs> My new, newer Heath kit, IM103 kit kit. Um, it's the, the re-kit exercise is basically my rebellion against uh, so-called, you know, 
never built or unbuilt heat kits on eBay that fetch absurd prices. Um, and this is the subject of a, another rant uh, that I'll do a video on. But when, when you see people asking hundreds or thousands of dollars for unopened heat kits, um, that just strikes me as stupid. Uh, so I thought, well, if you enjoy building heat kits, you should enjoy unbuilding heat kits and rebuilding them properly. And so that's why I will turn this into a re-kit and then leave it in that state. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little tour of three vintage IM103 voltage monitors um, in, in various states. And if you ever run across one and want to rebuild it, you can take example of, of the first one and see uh, what I changed and what makes sense. So as part of the uh, overall re-kitting operation, I've started t taking this uh, IM103 apart, and I thought I'd take a pause to just look at what the previous person owner uh, had done to this thing, uh, in particular the parts he used, uh, which are obviously not heat kit. So the first one I looked at uh, was this monster here. Um, turns out this is an 18, 18K 1% resistor, which is exactly what's called for uh, in the kit, although this one is 2 watts and, and wire round, uh, which is probably overkill, but fine. Uh, I suspect, again, this is part of, uh, he had to replace his original 18K for some reason, and maybe that's all he could find, was sort of this vintage wire round precision resistor. So that one's actually fine, and I measured it, and it was uh, pretty much spot on. Um, as an aside, I, I kind of looked at this diode, which was flapping in the wind. This is supposed to be a 16.1 uh, a volt Zener diode, um, which helps as part of the calibration and the overall operation of the unit. And what, in fact, he has here uh, is a 1N5352, which is a 15 volt uh, Zener. So... Mm, I have no idea how that would affect it, but it probably wouldn't work very well. Um, finally, I was very curious as to why they were two; these two resistors were in parallel, um, and this one was kind of getting loose. And um, so the one that's the one that's on here, the green one, is um, is 10k at 10 watts, um, which is fine uh, because originally Heathkit provided a 10k at 2 watt which ran very, 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 very hot. Um, 10 watt is overkill, 5 watt is probably just fine, as I've, as I've found out. What I didn't understand, why this guy was in parallel with it. And this guy is totally unmarked. And so I measured him, and I, he measured out at exactly 10K. So probably a, also a 10K, uh, 5 or 10 watt. But he had it in parallel, which of course means that the overall resistance here is 5K. And this is critical to the operation of the, uh, it's the dropping resistor for the Zener. Um, so I'm putting half the, half the uh, resistance here is going to affect stuff, especially with the Zener that's off, unless he cleverly calculated this to be exactly what he needed, which I don't know. Anyway, this thing was partially unsoldered, so uh, everything else is pretty much stock heat kit, uh, although obviously going to be replaced in particular uh, this little, this little guy here um, that's burnt or charred or oxidized or something. I'm not even going to bother testing him. So that'll be the, uh, this'll probably hopefully be it 